I wanted to know what it feels like to fly a plane, so I downloaded a flight simulator, but quickly realized that using a mouse to control things just isn't that realistic. You see, most planes are actually controlled by flight sticks inside the cockpit, so I decided to make one out of Lego, using a simple mechanism that turns your ordinary computer mouse into a fully functional flight joystick. The hardest part about this project is figuring out how to get the joystick to communicate with my laptop and control what's on the screen. I originally planned to use some sort of electronics like this robotic system here, utilizing servo motors to control the degree of tilt and then writing a program that sends data to the computer based on the positioning of the stick. But making something like this is quite complicated and takes a lot of time. If only if there was a simpler solution. If only if there was a device that already has the features I need built in. In order for this to work, we need to create a mechanism that can transfer the tilting motion of a stick into the linear motion of a mouse. Although this concept may seem complicated on paper, in reality, it's actually much more simple. The mechanism I have in mind will be a lot easier to explain once I have the actual model in front of me. So let's start building. The joystick itself needs to be able to tilt in different directions, so I needed to find a mechanism that would make this work. If I attach a rod to this frame, it can move forward and backwards, which means it has one axis of rotation. But if I attach this entire system onto another frame, it gives it the ability to freely move in any direction. Moving on to the handle, I decided to go with a super simple design so I can quickly test out the concept. It doesn't look that great, but hey, if it works, it works, and I'll be sure to improve it later on. We can add another two-axle gimbal onto the mouse, so now you can kind of get a feel for how this mechanism will work. I also made the stand that elevates the joystick so that the mouse mechanism can fit under. But there's a problem, as the stick tilts to the side, the distance increases, meaning you can't just connect the two mechanisms together directly. So after a bit of thinking, I was able to solve this problem by simply adding a bit of room into the grip. This way you can connect the two mechanisms together by sliding this rod into the hole which allows it to freely change in length, meaning the tilting of the stick doesn't interfere with the mechanism anymore. And just like that, the prototype version of our joystick is done, so let's test it out. Increase the throttle 30%. We're starting to move 10 kilometers per hour. 20. There's a lot of smoke there. Why am I tilting down? Can I pull up? It's pulling up actually. Oh no. Shoot. Oh. That was a pretty epic fail. Go. No. Okay, so it's finally starting to work now. After so long, I figured it out. This thing is amazing. A true engineering map. Let's go back a bit. Okay, pause. Zoom in. This is an A-10 Warthog, just moments before it unleashes a barrage of 30mm shells directly towards my plane. You may have noticed that my flight stick doesn't have a trigger, which means I'm unable to defend my plane from enemy aircraft. Functions like firing the cannons are triggered by pressing buttons on a mouse, but since the mouse is blocked from above, these buttons are unreachable. My first idea was to add a fin rod that travels through the center of the grip and presses the buttons, but this is a lot easier said than done. The space in the grip is limited, the distance still changes, the buttons aren't in the center, and to make matters even worse, the round surface of the mouse causes the rod to slip upon contact. No matter no matter what I tried, it just wouldn't work. Nope, nope, nope. I even considered just taking apart the entire mouse and placing the buttons onto the grip, but that kind of defeats the purpose since it prevents you from using the mouse normally. So eventually I gave up, but then I remembered something that could help me.
actually, that's probably not that safe. I finally have the perfect mechanism. While it may look simple, don't let that fool you because trust me, this took me forever to figure out. Here goes nothing. Let's go, it works! No matter which direction you tilt the stick, it's still able to press the button. And with all of that out of the way, we can finally move on to redesigning the grip. The current grip doesn't exactly look the best, so we're going to change that. I started off by building the basic shape for the grip, making sure that everything was roughly one-to-one -one in scale. Since I recently just watched the new Top Gun movie which featured the F-18, I decided to replicate its flight stick for my design. The F-18 flight stick has a lot of different weird shapes and curves, making it really hard to replicate. A ton of sloped and curved pieces were used to make the grip as realistic as possible, and I also used these tactic pieces so that this upper section could be mounted at an angle. The entire grip was built on its side rather than vertically in order to increase its strength. Since the trigger is placed on a side rather than a top, I needed to create a mechanism that transfers its horizontal movement to the rod. This is a fairly easy thing to do, and all I did was place two of these sloped pieces at a 90 degree angle facing towards each other. It was quite challenging to fit everything into the limited space inside the grip, but using a few clever techniques, I was able to get things to work quite nicely. I am honestly super happy with how this grip turned out. The mechanism works flawlessly, and from a distance, you can't even really tell that it's made out of Lego. And with all of that, the joystick is finally done. But wait, I still have one more trick up my sleeve. You know how some people mount their monitors directly to the table using monitor arms that clamp onto the edges? Well, I'm going to do exactly that, but for my joystick instead. I started off by creating this base section that not only prevents the mouse from falling out, but also moves up and down in order to ensure that the mechanism works more smoothly. Getting the table mount to support all the weight was quite a challenge. I had to use a ton of supports and beams on the interior to ensure that everything would hold up. For the mechanism that tightens the clamp, I decided to use a gear rack and a warm gear. You can adjust the height of the clamp using the warm gear, but no matter how hard you push the gear rack, it will always stay in place. In order for the mechanism to work properly, this section of the clamp needs to fit perfectly, even the smallest of gaps will cause unwanted movement. I played around with a bunch of different techniques, and eventually I finally got one that worked. There was actually a lot more work and design choices that went into making this clamp, but I'm sure you have better things to do than listen to me talk about the structural integrity of LEGO, so let's move on. Initially, the clamp wasn't working the best, so I added these rubber pieces to both the top and bottom. Although there is a slight bit of bending when you tighten the clamp, it is though incredibly strong, and at the end of the day, it is made out of LEGO, so I would say that it's good enough. Attaching the joystick to the clamp was really quick and quite satisfying, and the finished model was just stunning. I only had one more complaint, and that was easily solved with a bit of money. After buying the springs, I was able to solve the problem within seconds. This kind of shows that life is paid to win, which is kind of sad if you think about it. So why don't we spend some more money? You know, if you think about it, I probably shouldn't have wasted my money on something I'll only use a few times, but we don't talk about that. It's finally time to test out the LEGO flight stick and see how it compares to the $30 flight stick I bought off Amazon. Would this project be successful, or would it turn out to be a complete failure? It was time for the moment of truth. Wait, what? Does it not work? I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with the computer mouse. If I, like, move the joystick really aggressively, right? The ailerons don't really seem to move. The mouse is on and it definitely has power and it's plugged in. That was so satisfying. In honor of the own mouse that served me for at least five years, I decided to put its battery and case onto the new one. Now you probably think I'm joking, but somehow the keyboard broke just the day after I broke my mouse. With the new mouse in place, the flight stick finally works. If I move it in real life, it also moves inside the simulator. And without further ado, let's test this thing out. Increasing throttle in 3, 2, 1. That looks amazing. Oh 
Oh, I forgot to retract the gear. Oh no. Put that up. There we go. Gear retract. The flight stick works surprisingly well, even better than I expected. The movement was silky smooth, the table mount held up nicely, and the flight stick was just super fun to play with. But how does the flight stick perform in a dogfight against enemy aircraft? Initially, it was quite hard to aim precisely since I wasn't used to using a flight stick and because the sensitivity was slightly too high. But after a bit of practice, I was able to get the hang of it. Okay, it took me quite a few tries, but eventually I was able to destroy an enemy aircraft. Let's go! So, how does my flight stick compare to the one I bought off Amazon? Obviously, the one I bought was much stronger and way more comfortable to hold. It also returns to the exact center every single time, unlike my joystick, which is slightly less precise. However, the range of motion is much smaller, which makes it incredibly hard to make precise movements or aim. A Vodis flight stick is probably much more reliable than the one I made myself. The LEGO flight stick performs just as well, and I personally like it better. <gasps> That was not realistic, but still pretty cool. If you want to make something like this for yourself, I recommend trying to replicate this earlier version. As long as you get the basic mechanism correct, you can modify it to fit any computer mouse. I spent a ton of time and a good portion of my winter break editing this video, so if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and comment down below what I should make next. Happy holidays and thank you for watching.